So one of the areas where PSSIU has been particularly active in terms of its research uh, portfolio has been the analysis of social care funding arrangements. That analysis involves understanding the levels of demand for social care services now and in the future and understanding the levels of resources that will be required to meet, uh, meeting those levels of demand and finally understanding the um, sorts of funding arrangements that could be put in place in order to guarantee that the, the uh, financial resources will be there in order to fund the necessary services. Um, the first challenge uh, that um, is uh, to be met when uh, looking at uh, this question is to understand first of all the numbers of people that will be uh, demanding services in the future. And in order to do that um, we have to obviously take into account issues such as demographic patterns, the aging of the population is clearly a very important element uh, in that, but not just that, we need to understand all the very important factors such as for example the extent to which um, let's say all the people in the future will be more or less dependent than they are now because we could have more older people but fitter older people and as a result demand could go down. We need to understand other factors such as the availability of um, the so-called informal care, so the extent to which people might be um, able to uh, receive support from uh, families uh, and, and, and friends and as a result might not require formal services to uh, provide them with the same uh, level of uh, support. And finally, um, we need to also understand issues such as the extent to which the price, the cost per unit of uh, services in the future might vary. All those are very important elements um, when understanding what's the challenge uh, in terms of meeting social care needs in the future. In order to do this analysis, oh well, sorry, that's in terms of understanding the, uh, uh, the, uh, the level of the challenge in terms of the, the demand for, for services, then you need to understand the, the nature of the services that you would want to provide. How many services would you want to provide to whom? And finally, you need to understand how you will pay for those services. What are the funding arrangements that you'll need to put in place to guarantee that the money will be there to pay for the services that will be required. Um, and that's very important, not just because um, that uh, determines who will pay for, for what, what will be the responsibility to the state and individuals, but also because that affects actually the level of consumption of services and therefore is a, very important in terms of understanding whether as a result of um, too high charges, for example, there will be unmet need in the future. Um, in order to analyze these questions, we have been uh, developing a range of simulation models, macro simulation models and micro simulation models. And that allows us to understand those questions, what levels of services will be required, what's the level of need, and how can we structure uh, payments, uh, systems, uh, funding arrangements, for um, different groups in society now and in the future. And by different groups, I mean people in different need groups and also in terms of uh, different levels of income and wealth. Through those models, we have been able to contribute to policy in a very significant way. We have been involved and contributed analysis to a large number of reviews, um, both uh, sponsored by uh, government, but also independent reviews. As for example, um, the 1997 uh, um, Royal Commission on the Funding of Long-Term Care, but ever since a wide range of uh, reviews, the One Less Social Care Review, a number of uh, green and white papers uh, produced by government, and uh, the Deal Not um, Commission that looked at the funding of care and support. Um, for example, in terms of the Deal Not analysis, our analysis were able to contribute very importantly in terms of uh, understanding the distribution of care costs for um, through a person's lifetime and showing, for example, that uh, typically you find that even though there's, a, uh, let's say, about a fifth of uh, the older population will not require social care needs, there will be a small minority, uh, about, let's say, 10% of um, people over 65, that will require very substantial levels of uh, care, worth perhaps in excess of £100,000 uh, worth of care. And as a result, there is a need to develop some form of social insurance, of in, uh, some, some form of protection of insurance so that we can cap the uh, level of uh, financial risk 
faced by people associated with uh, social care needs. Looking at the future, we expect to, um, obviously, uh, the aging of the population is not about to stop, so this is going to remain a very important uh, policy question in the foreseeable future, and we hope that our models will be able to contribute further to um, the development of policy by government.